Hello, this is Dr. Ali Al Bahrawi, Professor of Hydraulics at the Faculty of Engineering in Shams University. This is my first uh, lecture on the subject of infographics and it talks about the history uh, of infographics. The information graphics or infographics are graphical visual representations of information, data or knowledge intended to present information quickly concisely and clearly. They can improve cognition by utilizing graphics to enhance the human visual system's ability to see patterns and trends. Social media sites such as Facebook and Twitter have also allowed for individual infographics to be spread among many people around the world. Infographics are widely used in the age of short ascension span. Modern maps, especially route maps for transit systems, use infographics techniques to integrate a variety of information such as a conceptual layout of a transit network, transfer points, and local landmarks. Public transportation maps, such as those for the Washington Metro and London Underground, are well-known infographics. Public places, such as transit terminals, usually have some sort of integrated signage system with standardized icons and stylized maps. Signage systems are visually oriented information systems consisting of signs, maps, arrows, and color coding systems, pictograms, and different typographic elements. Signage elements differ from other methods of information presentation because they are typically used to guide people's passage through the physical world. Road signs on a highway, station identification signs in a subway, and overhead signs in an airport are all common examples of signage systems. A design aesthetic of certain fonts are frequently used, especially humanist sans serif designs like Frutiger, which was created in 1969 for signage in Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport. One of the most commonly cited examples of a well-designed signage system is the London Underground. The typeface used on these signs, New Johnston, was designed in 1913 specifically for the underground to provide readability at a distance. This is an example of the Washington Metro route diagram, a typical infographics you find uh, almost in all modern cities. It has a red line, a green line, a yellow line, an orange line, and a blue and gray lines. In Egypt, in this particular infographic, we find three lines, the green that goes from Cairo airport to Imbaba, and the blue goes from Helwan to Al Marg Al Gedida, and the red one that goes from El Munib to Shubra Al Khima. In 1857, English nurse Florence Nightingale used information graphics to persuade Queen Victoria to improve conditions in military hospitals. The principal one she used was the Coxcomb chart, a combination of stacked bar and pie charts that you will study later on, depicting number and causes of death during each month of the Crimean War. This is a photograph of Florence Nightingale. She was an English social reformer and statistician and the founder of modern nursing. Nightingale came to prominence while serving as a manager of nurses trained by her during the Crimean War, where she organized the tending to wounded soldiers. This is a graph. Uh, it's also called polar area diagram that indicates the death in numbers that occurred from preventable diseases in blue and from wounds in red and due to other causes in black. Yeah. 
the areas of the blue, red, and black are each measured from the center of the common vertex. The black line across the red triangle in November 1854 that I had a, a red ellipse around marks the boundary of the death from all other causes during the month. Uh, you can also find other red ellipses, one in October 1854 and April 1855 with the black area coincides with the red. In the other uh, graph, you will find that in January and February 1856, the blue coincides with the black. The entire areas may be compared by following the blue, the red, and the black lines, enclosing them. Another uh, early history important infographic was in 1861, where we had an influential information graphic on the subject of Napoleon's disastrous march to Moscow. The graphic creator, Charles Joseph Minard, captured four different changing variables that contributed to Napoleon's downfall into a single two-dimensional image. Very impressive. It uh, indicates the army's direction as they traveled, the location the troops passed through, the size of the army as troops died from hunger and wounds, and the freezing temperature they experienced. Uh, this is a photograph of Mr. Charles Joseph Minard, and he was a civil engineer recognized for his significant contribution in the field of information graphics and civil engineering and statistics. Minard was, among other things, noted for his representation of numerical data on geographic maps before uh, the invention of the geographic information system. This is uh, the outstanding graph where the number of men is symbolized by the broadness of the colored zones at a rate of one millimeter for 10,000 men. Those numbers are written across the zones, as you can see. The red signifies the men who entered Russia, the black, those who got out of it. Minar also included a second chart showing the temperature on various days during the retreat. Of course, he used a different uh, temperature units, but the coldest part of the, of the retreat was around 937.5 degrees centigrade. Edward Tufte, who will be mentioned later, has called this chart probably the best statistical graphic ever drawn. With vector graphics, and raster graphics in the 20th century becoming ubiquitous in computing in the 21st century, data visualizations have applied to commonly used computer systems, including desktop publishing and geographic information systems. Edward Tufte, who is a pioneer in data visualization, wrote a series of books like Visual Explanation, the visual display of quantitative information and envisioning information on the subject of information graphics. Referred to by the New York Times as Da Vinci of Data, Tufte began to give day-long lectures and workshops on the subject of infographics starting in 1993. As uh, of 2012 and now 2019, Tufte still gives his lectures. To Tufte, Good data visualization represent every data point accurately and enable a viewer to see trends and patterns in the data. This is a photograph of Mr. Edward Tufte. And this is my photograph of his book, The Visual Display of Quantitative Information, uh, where Edward Tufte defines graphical display in the following points. The graphical display should show the data, induce the viewer to think about the substance, avoid distorting what the data have to say, present many numbers in a small space, make large data sets coherent, 
encourage the eye to compare different pieces of data, reveal the data at several levels of detail, serve a reasonably clear purpose like description, exploration, etc., and integrate with the statistical and verbal description of data. Hans Rosling, another important person in infographics, uh, he is Swedish and he was a physician, academician, statistician and public speaker. He was professor of international health uh, at Karolinska in Institute and was the co-founder and chairman of the Gapminder Foundation which developed the Trendalyzer software system that you are going to see soon. This is a photograph of Mr. Hans Rosling who died recently in February 7, 2017. And this is an example of his Gapminder software showing his moving bubbles and processing huge amount of data by defining uh, the place on earth and the countries involved and choosing among different parameters what is for the x-axis and what is for the y-axis. The colors here shows the different parts of the world. The countries related to the classification he has made. Now I am going to show you an interesting video of Mr. Hans Rosling showing how he introduces data in, 20, in 200 years for 200 countries only in four minutes. Enjoy the video. $40,000. So down here is poor and sick, and up here is rich and healthy. Now I'm going to show you the world 200 years ago in 1810. Here come all the countries. Europe brown, Asia red, Middle East green, Africa south of Sahara blue, and the Americas yellow. And the size of the country bubble show the size of the population. And in 1810, it was pretty crowded down there, wasn't it? All countries were sick and poor. Life expectancy were below 40 in all countries. And only the UK and the Netherlands were slightly better off, but not much. And now, why start the world? The Industrial Revolution makes countries in Europe and elsewhere move away from the rest. But the colonized countries in Asia and Africa, they are stuck down there. And eventually, the Western countries get healthier and healthier. And now, we slow down to show the impact of the First World War and the Spanish flu epidemic. What a catastrophe! And now I speed up through the 1920s and the 1930s. And in spite of the Great Depression, Western countries forge on towards greater wealth and health. Japan and some others try to follow, but most countries stay down here. Now, after the tragedies of the Second World War, we stop a bit to look at the world in 1948. 1948 was a great year. The war was over, Sweden topped the medal table at the Winter Olympics, and I was born. But the differences between the countries of the world was wider than ever. The United States was in the front, Japan was catching up. Brazil was way behind, Iran was getting a little richer from oil, but still had short lives. And the Asian giants, China, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Indonesia, they were still poor and sick down here. But 
Look what is about to happen. Here we go again. In my lifetime, former colonies gained independence and then finally they started to get healthier and healthier and healthier. And in the 1970s, then countries in Asia and Latin America started to catch up with the Western countries. They became the emerging economies. Some in Africa follows. Some Africans were stuck in civil war and others hit by HIV. And now we can see the world today in the most up-to-date statistics. Most people today live in the middle, but there are huge differences at the same time between the best of countries and the worst of countries. And there are also huge inequalities within countries. These bubbles show country averages, but I can split them. Take China, I can split it into provinces. There goes Shanghai. It has the same wealth and health as Italy today. And there is the poor inland province Guizhou. It is like Pakistan. And if I split it further, the rural parts are like Ghana in Africa. And yet, despite the enormous disparities today, we have seen 200 years of remarkable progress. That huge historical gap between the West and the rest is now closing. We have become an entirely new converging world. And I see a clear trend into the future with aid, trade, green technology and peace. It's fully possible that everyone can make it to the healthy, wealthy corner. Well, what you have seen in the last few minutes is a story of 200 countries shown over 200 years and beyond. It involved plotting of 120,000 numbers. Pretty neat, eh? Yes, it is pretty neat, as you can see. Uh, and actually now, I'm going to, to give you a break, but not a usual break, a musical break that I hope you enjoy. Uh, it's Mr. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And the, the, the piece of music that you are going to listen during the break is called Eine kleine Nachtmusik, and it's only for 2 minutes and 22 seconds. Uh, you read the information about Mr. Mozart while you listen to his beautiful music. <laughs> 